Hey everyone, Larry here. We invited some friends to Big Idea to watch our new show. Afterwards, they asked some of the production team a few questions. Why did Tom My run away from his best friend? Why did Tom run away from his best friend, Huck? Well, it's because Huck wanted to help little Yimmy, uh, and Tom didn't want to help because Tom had something he wanted to do somewhere else. So Tom decided that he would rather do his own thing than to help little Yimmy and go with Huck. How many of you guys know what the lesson of this show is? Oh. Oh, very good, James. Helping others. It says it right behind me, yes. <laughs> Clark Wayne, we started off with this idea of him being a Mark Twain-ish kind of character as a storyteller, um, and perhaps a bit of Foghorn Leghorn in his, you know, kind of, well, well, I'll never, I'll never. And we kind of went that way with some guys. But then somebody at, at Big Idea, I think, suggested, well, what about George, you know, the narrator from The Toy That Saved Christmas and Rack Shack and Benny? What about that guy? Could he be the Clark Wayne? So I did a test. I said, well, let me try it. Let me try the narration as, as George. Um, and I wasn't sure it worked, but I sent it down. And they went, that's it. We got it. We're bringing George back. All right, we'll bring George back. What do you know about that? He's been out of work for 10 years, living off Social Security, and now he's a star again. Needless to say, he couldn't be happier. Variety of people. Sometimes the writer will, if, it's, if you know right on the outset, a very particular Bible verse that you want to use. Um, we'll choose that Bible verse because it, it does a really good job. In this case, I do think Phil chose it. it was, I think it was in his original script. Yeah. Um, we've had a couple shows where we get all the way to the end and we kind of have to think real careful about what the right verse would be. Do I know you? Oh, don't mind me. I, I'm just the narrator. Okie dokie. Um, we also have to use special like microphones that make you have different sounds to do the voices. When we record the voices, we don't do anything special at that point. We just record them on a, on a microphone. So just a regular microphone? Regular, expensive microphone. But then, the magic of computers, we actually shrink the voices just a little bit. We make them a little bit higher. So then Larry sounds a little bit more like a cartoon character. All those in favor, say, mm. Yeah, sweetie. Um, how did you make a little yummy? He was hard. He was a hard character work, to work with because we wanted him to be very simple, but we didn't want him to be too dumb, you know. Uh, so that was something we worked a lot with, and we were developing it to make sure that he came across as a simple guy, but that he still was pretty smart when you really got to know him. I felt like while we were working on it that we had an opportunity to make little Jimmy a little bit sillier. So that's why we put on that silly blonde wig that he has on, and we put later hosen on him. Uh, and we gave him a little bit of an accent and made him kind of Swedish. And then we decided we would call him Little Yimmy instead of Little Jimmy. I have a question. So in Sweden, do they not pronounce J's? Oh, don't mind me. I, I'm just the narrator. Yeah. Um, the answer is it just kind of depends. In this case, we kind of started with the idea that we wanted to tell a VeggieTales version of Huckleberry Finn. And we looked at what kind of the major themes in that story were. And we felt that a really logical or a really natural uh, lesson to tell from that story was, was the lesson about helping others. So in this case, they both kind of came forth at the same time. Hey, shouldn't we be coming up on m m m Muscatine? There it is. One of the things we try to do in VeggieTales is make things factually based. Realizing it may not mean anything to a kid when they first see it, but maybe Years down the road, they'll recollect and say, hey, that was true, and yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, one of those being like this, with Muscatine with Phil, that's, that's yes, that's Phil's hometown. Uh, St. Louis World's Fair was another one that Brian worked very hard to get actual, you know, data that was legitimate fair, World's Fair at the time. Originally, the climax of the show was set at, at a World's Fair in Memphis, Tennessee. So I kind of, in development, pushed the story forward about 20 years so that we could set it in St. Louis, in 1904 where there actually was a World's Fair. So the Ferris wheel that you see in our story is actually kind of loosely based on this real Ferris wheel that really was in St. Louis in 1904. I've got a song! You're a lifesaver. Um, on the show here, I, you heard me use my whistle. If you listen to the Silly Song again, I use some of my sound effects in the Silly Song. There's some rhythms. I use that one. You heard the slide whistle already. You want to go to sleep again, Brian? Okay. There we go. 
I started the show, had half the songs written and recorded, then completely left it and wrote the score for Pirates, went to Prague, recorded an orchestra, then came back to this, pulled it back out of the, the file, opened it back up, and uh, so, and then finished it up. So some of it was written well over a year ago, and then some of it I was working on literally the night before we mixed it. A lot of the music, a lot of the score, the background music, uh, relies on bluegrass styles of music, uh, folk music, Americana music. Um, but then as we get down closer to St. Louis, we really start to bring in the Dixieland sound. All of those styles of music, they're uh, very rooted in our country. It's historical music um, that was not brought over from Europe or some other countries. I think it's fun sometimes that a, a child might you know, hear some of this music and over the years maybe come back and later on discover Dixieland music for what it is and say, oh, well, if that sounds familiar, it, it sounds like that VeggieTales show I saw. Kurt always starts in the computer with synthesized stuff. And in this case, he had actually played out all the banjo stuff uh, for the score and then brought in our banjo player for just the songs and just to play the banjo on the songs and, and it would mix fine. Well, when we laid it all in, it made the synth stuff sound so bad, it was just too clean. You know, you could really tell the real one that had that you could really hear that picking and steel. And so when we played it up against the synth, it was like, okay, we gotta call this guy, call Mike back in. When Dooley and the bad guy enters the scene, we didn't want to make it too scary or too ominous, so we did some things like uh, using old timey like out of tune tack pianos like you'd hear in a in a western <laughs> sort of that old movie like oh here's the bad guy instead of real scary here's the bad guy i figure we're coming up on oh, hold on <laughs> water water everywhere doing a show about the mighty mississippi is a producer's nightmare Ooh, river that sounds expensive <laughs> I hear it was difficult to create all the water. Whenever you say I want to do water in computer animation, uh, a lot of effort gets put into making that water very realistic uh, in making sure that there's you know, lots of detail in how the current flows and, and how the water ripples behind a boat. Um, I pushed to make the water really simple uh, and very cartoony. That actually feels uh, different than you might expect, but in the end is, is really beautiful. Yeah. 